Hello and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to day 18 of Crummy's Christmas Countdown. It's one week to go till the big day and uh, yeah, better get some shopping done, eh? All jokes aside, of course, I have done some shopping, but I really need to do some wrapping. And today's beer might just be a great match to do that with. Uh, we're in for the big time again. Could it be the biggest one? We'll see. Let's find out what is behind door number 18. There we have it then from Throne Brewing. You can call me V, a triple IPA at 10.5%. Wow, and in a 440ml can. I'm a bit scared of this, if I'm honest. Um, now, this is a beer that, to be honest, I would have rather have reviewed and released uh, on Finite. The whole V for Vendetta thing, it makes sense. Um, but some of the artwork on the can that we'll go into in a minute doesn't make it entirely, um, what's, the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Um, inappropriate, shall we say, uh, with what's going on at the minute, so we'll uh, cover that in a moment. Um, in fact, we'll cover it right now because I'm going to give you a look at the can and we'll get straight into it. There we go then, you can call me V, triple IPA from Frome Brewing, 10.5%, and as you can see on there, there's a few key word, words, buzzwords at the top, vaccine, virus state, virus, uh, Virulent, 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 Tom, that's the word. Uh, there's some Abbey in the background there. Uh, European Beer Challenge nominee, loads of info on the back. Um, I'm not sure what point they're trying to make with this, but let's be honest, the artwork is fantastic. Nice deep yellow, nearly orange hue to this beer. Bit of a fruity aroma at a distance. In the glass then, slightly hazy, thick. It's it's not quite brilliant white, but it's almost not quite off white. It's just a just about white head, I think we it's fair to say. Um, currently in three finger formation, well that's probably my uh, dopey pouring skills. Um, Good amount of carbonation coming up from the bottom, but nothing too crazy again. It's 10.5%, so I can't imagine that head's gonna stick around for too long, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Right then, aroma time. Just IPA for days. It's got that slightly sweeter, a little more East Coast, fruity, kind of tropical style than necessarily a West Coast. Um, a proper rich, rich aroma. It's um. It's not especially grassy or piney, to be honest. It's really full on with the citrus bag, and yeah, I'm hoping there's gonna be something in there to try and balance it out, but I guess we'll find out. Let's do it. Cheers, Merry Christmas. Wow. All right, off the bat. So I was gonna say before, and got kind of carried away, the reason I didn't review this for um, November 5th bonfire night here in the UK was, I was in Scotland at the time. I'd forgotten that I had this at home and it had already been in my fridge for a couple of weeks, maybe even a month or two. Um, but I was also a little bit afraid of reviewing it. It's a big beer. Uh, it was sent to me. Now, I can't remember if Frome sent it to me or whether Slice UK sent it to me, to be honest. I've now lost all track of who sent me what beer when. Uh, but someone sent me this beer and I'm very appreciative for it. Um, but triple IPAs, well, let's be honest, not really my go-to style, not something I really appreciate very much, and especially when it's something that someone's put so much hard work and effort in, done a properly big, epic interpretation. I'm always a bit scared of reviewing it, because, well, I don't want to sit there and go, eh, it's all right, because, well, to you it might be fantastic, and it's just not for me. I'm blown away. This is the most easy-drinking... Well, it's not the most easy... Is it the most easy? It could be the most easy-drinking above 10 percent I've ever had. Um, it's certainly the most easy drinking triple IPA I've ever had, no doubt. I've not had loads, but it is super smooth. Um, it's super sweet. It's actually not that bitter. In fact, it's not bitter at all. In fact, I'm wondering where the bitterness is and where they've left it. Um, I'm not annoyed by that though, because IPA bitterness, hot bitterness, is not something that I'm particularly big on. It's the re kind of the reason I don't like them. Um, so for the fact this to be so sweet and smooth and quite soft and pillowy, yeah, for me, absolutely, really happy with it. Um, 
This is such a complex beer. The only way we're gonna do this any justice is a full top to bottom taste test, of course. I'm gonna do that now and then. This is one of the few beers I'm actually really, really excited to take a look at the can for because well, there's a load of info on it and there's probably some potential for a bit of controversy as well, I suspect. So, uh, but anyway, that comes later first, top to bottom taste test. So, initially, the very front of the tongue, no carbonation whatsoever. It's basically flat now, it's been out for a bit. Um, the sweetness, but it's mixed in with a bit of booze, a bit of alcohol burn, so you get that kind of sweet burn sensation at the front of the mouth. Next phase, starts to get a little fruity, but that's where all the bitterness is. It's not heavily bitter, you just get a bit of, well that's definitely beer bitterness, if that makes sense. Um, it's not hugely bitter, but it does have something. On the swallow, it's surprisingly tame for its ABV. Fruity, sweet, mango, pineapple, bit of orange, bit of grapefruit, but low down. It's more about the sweeter fruits, this one. And then on the swallow, slight abrasiveness, slight bitterness, bit of alcohol burn. Could be a bit of hot burn, to be honest. I'm not really, not really sure. There's just a bit of a severe warming. It's not even severe, a light warming in the throat. I just realised this t-shirt's sat all weird. What's going on? There we go. I forgot to mention this top. Beat up t-shirt on again today. Driving home for Christmas. Anyway, enough of that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag of delicious fruit that is going to get you pretty twisted pretty quickly, I think it's fair to say. I feel like this is one of my most chaotic reviews. And I'm a bit, it's just, send, it's just sending me completely off guard. There's loads of flavour in it, but it's not actually even that complex now I'm thinking about it. It's just super sweet, super fruity, super strong. It, it remains absolutely beer-based because the description I'm giving would give you the impression that it's maybe more like uh, into the fruited sour, high strength sour vibes, but it's not, it's not sour at all. A bit of bitterness, proper beer, but it's damn sweet, real sweet. Right, let's take a look at this can. So, you can call me V, triple IPA from Throne Brewing Company. As I said before at the top, it says vaccine vir 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 virulent. I can't, why can I not say that word? Virulent. Um, <laughs> Uh, virostatic and virus European beer challenge. It's got a double gold medal winner um, and another medal winner from CBMA. It says gorgeous amber hue triple IPA with a rich lush note of tropical fruit, citrus and pine. We'll come back to the pine. Um, further eloquent notes of tropical fruit and citrus brush the palate before a dry and smooth bitter finish. It's entirely possible that I have had this for too long. I don't think that's the case, but it's possible. Um, but I've just spotted the best before, so we'll talk about that in a minute. It says, inspired by the film of V for Vendetta and the theme of state exerting a high degree of control of private and public life, after months of living with COVID, will the mass vaccination be the return to normality in street parties and celebrations? Who knows? Let's just have another Just Call Me V. Hop. Citra and Idaho 7. I don't think I've ever raved about a Citra beer like that. It does not, it does not have that headachey, astringent, really, I don't know what, Citra element, which is making me think, has the hop died out in this can for me? Have I had it too long? Um, we'll talk about that more in a second. It says food pairing, go Mediterranean and serve this with grilled harissa chicken, uh, or maybe a pulled pork roll. I'll be honest, beer of this strength for me doesn't mix with food, ever, ever. It's all about low ABV beers with food, but anyway. But then it says, best before, the 31st of the 12th, and you're, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, that Tom, that's only a week and a half away. 2022. This, according to them, has over another year's shelf life on it. Now, unsurprising based on the ABV, but I would have thought this was all about the hop, the hop may have died out. But they're saying this is good for another well over a year. So please put this in the fridge to serve cold. I mean, it's been in the fridge since I got it. It's never been a sat at room temperature. Um, so I don't know. I'd love to know whether this is meant to be super hoppy or not because I'm super sensitive to citra and 
I'm not really not getting it with this. Um, it says, Frome Brewing Company is a family-run craft brewery based in Frome, Somerset. Using the finest local ingredients, we have been brewing unique and multi-award winning beer since 1999. It's got all their contact details. Um, it said, we don't use animal products in this beer, so it's unfined and may be cloudy. Not only does this make the beer taste better, but it means it's vegan friendly too. Please drink responsibly. Uh, and if you like this beer, please rate it on Untapped. Well, I won't because I don't have an Untapped account because I don't need that. I just don't. I just don't. Um, yeah. Well, well, well. Uh, not as controversial as the front of the can maybe uh, points out. I was a bit concerned this was going to go down a bit of a rabbit hole of conspiracy theory, but uh, turns out, no, they just like to put a cow in a fee for Vendetta uniform, um, which ultimately is probably the least worrying thing we've seen in the last two years. Um, yeah, I mean, this beer... The only thing I can think is that the such a strong ABV in this has broken down those elements of the Citra Hop that I really don't get on with. That's all I can assume because does it taste like Citra? Yes, but a few hops taste like Citra, but only Citra has that real driving home agonizing sensation for myself. So, I mean, I if you like triple IPAs, and you want to be slightly blown away about how easy one can be to drink, this is it. It's great. Would I buy another one? No. No, I wouldn't. Only reason being, I'm not a big triple IPA fan. The cost that this is, and I can't remember what it costs now, because I say it was sent to me, but it's not going to be cheap, let's be honest. Um, I would rather personally spend it on something a bit darker, but that's just my preference. For those of you who love your m multitudes of IPA, give it a go because I have to say from my point of view at least it's one of the better ones um, and that really is all I have to say about it now I said at the start of this video that I need to go do some wrapping of Christmas presents and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to go and sip this slowly over the next couple of hours while I swear at some sellotape and uh, ultimately end up wrapping stuff in uh, tin foil. So uh, I think we'll leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind, and I'll catch you tomorrow for day. I've lost track, 19, I hope. Cheers.